Hey guys, we're talking about safety today. This chapter is quite easy actually. It's a quite a short chapter. Not everyone does have a fascination with safety, but it is an important thing on a site. Why it is important, we'll get into that now. We'll be talking about the role of safety in construction, the procedures to identify safe working environments, and then the acts involved. So the construction industry is one of the most hazardous industries in the world. It has been statistically proven that on average, workers sustain two times more injuries and three times more fatalities than any other workers. Poor safety records in the construction industry is not only limited to human suffering, meaning that injuries isn't only bad for humans that get hurt. It also contributes to other costs such as the productivity uh, gets slower, the company reputation is bad, and then rescheduling and delays occur. Certain laws have been passed by parliament to ensure workers work under conditions that protect their well-being. One of those acts are the Machinery and Occupational Safety Acts. Objectives uh, is to control the working conditions of all workers. It helps to prevent accidents and industrial diseases. To achieve the objectives of this act, the employer must ensure that. So this is what the employer must do. Machines must be fitted with safeguards. Protective clothing must be given to workers. Training should be given to operate those machines. And then the workplace should be free of steam, smoke, and all of those other fumes and gases. But there's also a role to employees. Just because the employer gives you that stuff doesn't mean the employee actually follows those rules. So the employee should use the safety equipment. They should not interfere or abuse safety equipment. They should not endanger himself or others, and they should obey orders issued in the interest of safety. That's what that act entails. The further, it also goes on to say employers keep an accident register recording so in that recording it should have the date and time the name the description of the accident and when the inspector was notified and when the work was resumed an inspector must be notified when an accident occurs so the accident must be one that results in a few of these things it does sound a little bit gruesome but that's this is when you do notify an inspector when a person uh, when death is caused to a person, when there is injury likely to cause death, maybe later on in the hospital, a person loses a limb or part of a limb or sustains a permanent physical defect, or a person is unable to continue normal activities for 14 days because of that injury. Okay, general safety measures the builder must carry out. Stairways and passages should be lighted. They should also be free from any obstructions. Areas in which the people can fall must be properly protected. A fence should be around the site to protect passing people. Scaffolding must be used to provide working platforms. We have went into scaffolding so far. Access to the working area must be provided and kept closed. Excavation must be fenced off from the public. Notice of danger must be put up. Safety clothing should be given to the contractor and the builder, and then dangerous goods must be stored in safe places. There are various protective clothing as well to your workers and to the contractors. The general ones are split up into your categories like eyes, head, body, legs, hands, feet, ears, and lungs. Uh, you can read up more on all of these different things if you maybe don't know all of them or know why some of them do exist. Maybe something like an apron or a kidney belt, uh, mittens, why do you need gloves, why do you need mittens. Okay, going further into protective clothing. One of the basic problems of safety is getting your workers actually to wear that, e that equipment. I don't know if you've been on site, but that is generally one of the problems or they don't wear the equipment right. Factors that influences the workers in using the equipment include, can the equipment be worn with ease and comfort? Is it uncomfortable? Does it make them hot? All that type of stuff makes workers not want to wear it. Does it interfere with their normal working procedures? So is it more difficult to work with the gloves on 
or with the gloves off, that type of thing you have to think of. Does the worker understand why it is necessary? Why is it necessary to wear a hard hat when you are one meter below the ground level? Uh, can economic or social considerations or disciplinary actions be used to make the worker use protective equipment? A lot of places use that last point instead of the, last, the previous three. Okay, then you get another act, the Workman's Compensation Amendment Act. The main function of this act is paying compensation to workers for industrial accidents. It's also for occupational diseases uh, in preventing industrial accident and rehabilitating injured workers. You can read more of this act on page 207. Then you, we talk about the National Occupational Safety Act association or NOSA. Don't know if you've read up on them, but a lot of you will probably somewhere in your life decide maybe I should do a health and safety certificate or something in along those lines through NOSA. They do everything along health and safety, firefighting, all those health stuff related to a site. So most people do have this one of their degrees or one of their certificates rather say it like that when they do work on site. NOSA is a company registered under the Companies Act as an association not for gain, so not for profit. The association's aim are to supply a service to management in industries by advising on accident prevention techniques and promote safety. They do this by talks and pamphlets and posters and literature and training courses. That's what I've already spoke about the training courses. There are essentially four basic causes of accidents. That is the conditions that are unsafe, lack of knowledge or skills, physical or mental defects, and then improper attitudes. Something you can read up for me is what does housekeeping refer to in civil engineering? It isn't mopping the house or cleaning the house. It does refer to something else.